Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all, to those who are taking part here in the church, and to those who are viewers at home. We welcome you to our Ash Wednesday service, which marks the beginning of Lent. And Lent is a time when we come to God in penitence, when we repent of our sins and our wrongdoings, and we have time to meditate and reflect and ask God for his forgiveness. So we start our service this evening with the first hymn to Just As I Am Without One Plea. And Jessica will sing for us. Jessica. Brothers and sisters, isn't it wonderful and a blessing that we have the opportunity of to come to God to bring our sorrowfulness and our sinfulness to him and he's willing to forgive us. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Grace, mercy, and peace from, our, from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepare for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, 
Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now come to the time for our readings, and Reverend Chiga will read the Old Testament reading for us. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 58, reading from 1 to 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments, they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your first day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist with a wicked fist, such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it not to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall call for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, 
the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your, your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in perched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose, water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Reverend Chiga. We'll now have the Psalms read to us, Psalms 51, and John H. will read for us. Reading from Psalm 51, verses 1 to 18. Prayer for cleansing and pardon. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, John. We'll have a gospel and sermon, and Evangelist Christine will bring that to us. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 6, verses 16 to 18. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O God. And whenever you fast, do not look dismayed like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces 
so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sit down, please. Right. Today, it is Ash Wednesday, and I want to speak about Matthew 6, verses 16 to 18, and what Jesus told us about fasting and the way we should do it. We have seen our reverend reading Isaiah 58, verses 1 to 6, on good fasting. I have some questions here. What is it that we are doing? And why do we do it? Before I move forward, I want to give a definition of fasting. Generally, the acceptable definition of fasting among Christians over the century is fasting is a temporary denial of something that is good in itself, like food, in order to intensify your expression of need for something greater, for example, God and his work in our lives. God and his work in our lives. This is awesome. And that is why we fast. I'll move forward now. Since fasting is a temporary denial of something that is good, like food, what is that thing? What is that good thing that you and I want to give up in denial of ourselves? Let us think about this. Jesus said, in fact, we should fast. But when we fast, we should go out of our way. He says, as much as possible, washing our face, combing our hair, and putting, applying oil on our body. And he's telling us that we should keep all these things when we fast. And we should keep them away from allowing other people to know that we are fasting. Even more clearly in this passage, Jesus insisted that our fasting should not be for the sake of impressing others. We don't want to fast to impress others. And move forward. Christ did not say if we fast. He said, but when we fast, he expects his followers to fast as we live in a world that vibes for our attention and affection. So fasting for Christians should be radically focused towards God. And that in the sense, when we fast, it is a great test and a confirmation that God is real to us. When we fast, we are not trying to impress others, but we are trying. What he's trying to tell us is we should go out of our way to fast. Going out of our way is applying, making ourselves look nice, and not showing off that we are fasting. Listen here, this is important. Since we are fasting in the secret, God is, only, is the only person who knows that we are fasting. The disciplines can't impress anybody but the almighty God. And it takes us closer to God. 
and to have a dialogue with him. Because when we fast, we are denying ourselves of this food. And as we do that, the body will be submitted, will be humble, because it is empty. We had dialoguing with God on a one-to-one -one relationship. Are you getting me? On a one-to-one -one relationship. That is important. Because our fasting is not carnal. It's not to people around us. But we are talking, communicating, conversing with God. Praying and fasting, all it can do is a test whether you and God are really having a transaction. And in this transaction, it will involve four things. Your faith, your prayer, your fasting, and waiting on the Lord. And once we do this, we dialogue with him, we have faith in him, we are fasting, and we are praying, and we are waiting on him. So, in order to be able to walk, we want him to walk with us. And that is why we are fasting. In that passage, Christ has told us that he has promised us a special reward for those who seek the Lord with fasting and with the right heart. What God needs here is our heart, 100% focusing on him. When we fast, God needs our 100% heart, focusing on him. Right, all during this session of Lent, Christ wants, he wants us, he wants to lead us into a deeper intimacy. Because as we deny, I don't know what we want to give up. I'm still going to that. We have to give, give up something. We are denying ourselves of, of something here. It's either food or drink or something special. If we cannot go without food. But what, what Christ is saying here is that we are not showing others, but we are showing our God to have a dialogue and then to wait on him. And he's saying that our God who is in secret will reward us in public. And he's saying here that he will lead us into a deeper relationship with him. When we fast, we give in, we give in our heart and also for his service in his kingdom. Fasting here, as our Lord Jesus Christ has said it, is simple. We don't have to publicize it. Simple and easy. We fast, we go about our normal way throughout this Lent season. We deny ourselves of either food or something that we're giving up. And what is it you and I are giving up during this Lent? And he is saying that we focus on him, we have a dialogue with him, a one-to-one -one relationship. Nobody there, because we are denying our body, the carnal body, the blood and flesh. Is out of the way, and we can focus right on him. Now, he's saying that he will reward us in public. Once we give our 100% heart, he will reward us. How do you reward us? Walk with him, and he will do something marvelous in our lives. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, draw us, your people, into a deeper season of fasting and praying, including purification. Help us to see the world through the eyes of those in the first Lent season. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. As we deny ourselves from food or anything that we are giving up, to reflect and pray. Make us to experience a new life through Christ. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Evangelist Christine, for reminding us about fasting and that fasting draws us nearer to God. In, and if we communicate with him and read his word, then God will hear us. It now comes to the time for our self-examination and for our confession. We are all sinful people, and when we come close to God, and especially on this Ash Wednesday, and the beginning, which is the beginning of Lent, then it is time for us to confess to God our sins and to repent from them. So let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy, Blessed, and Glorious Trinity, we have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at your own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord, Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen.
Make our hearts clean, O God. New a right spirit within us. Eternal Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Now come to the time for the imposition of ashes. Brothers and sisters, due to us unable to gather in person for the imposition of ashes, please make the sign of the cross on your forehead as a sign of the spirit of repentance. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of mor mor our morality, for it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So when I make the declaration, I will read the declaration when we all make the sign of the cross on our forehead, especially for those at home. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Lord, the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Reverend Chiga will now do... Um, lead us in intercession but before that jessica will sing for us spirit of the living god
Let us pray. Our prayer, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to mark the beginning of Lent together. We pray that you will guide us in all our thoughts, all our actions, all our decisions throughout Lent, that we will mark it in a way that is worthy of your sacrifice and of the salvation which we have received. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our church members, many of who are not able to be here with us physically, Father, we pray that you will be with them today and throughout Lent, that they will know your blessing and your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community here in Forest Gate, commending to you, Lord, all who suffer in different ways. We pray for those who are poor, all who are struggling to make ends meet, especially at this time. Pray for those who are ill, especially those who have been affected by COVID. We commend to you all who have lost loved ones at this time. Heavenly Father, in whatever way people in our community are suffering today, we pray that you will be with them and help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country. We commend to you all those who are working so hard in various hospitals and residential homes and nursing homes to keep people alive and keep people healthy. Comment to you, nurses, doctors, healthcare workers, carers. We pray also for scientists who are working hard to define, to devise new effective cures and vaccines. Comment to you, government officials, working on policies to keep us all safe. But I will pray that you will support and help all those who are fighting, joining this fight against COVID, so that we will have victory, so that you, Lord, will have victory over this terrible disease that has blighted all our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to you our world. We pray for suffering people around the world, those affected by COVID and other things, those struggling with poor medical care, those in places where there is conflict. We pray especially for the people of Yemen, where a war has been raging for the past six years, and the people of Myanmar, where a military junta has taken over control of the country. But I will pray that you bring liberation and peace in these and other places. That you bring provision in places where people are suffering. Bring healing in places where there is uh, no medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for a day like this when we can gather together either physically or through um, social media to mark the beginning of Lent. We commend to you ourselves, our church members, those in our community, people across our country, and people across our world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Chiga. We now have our final hymn, which will be sung to us by Stephanie and John, Spirit of the Living God. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> our final hymn will be, O oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go.
Thank you, Stephanie and John, for the beautiful singing of that hymn. Let me give, let me say thanks to Reverend Chiga for the reading, to Evangelist Christine for the sermon and the gospel, and for Jess for singing for us, to Ifoma for technical support and to John and Steph for singing and to Matthew for playing for us so beautifully. And thanks to everyone at home who are viewing or listening or will tune in later on to, um, to watch a service on Facebook. Thank you for your support, your continuous support and we we'll see you on Sunday at 10 o'clock for service. And now the dismissal. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.